Hi everyone, welcome to another Yarn Scrap Friday with me, Laura, and in today's tutorial, another festive treat for you. We're going to be making some teeny tiny little baubles, so a super fun, beginner friendly, very easy project, so, and it's very fast, so let's begin. Okay, so you can make these in any colour that you like. Um, I happen to be making them in red and green, and with that sort of yellow um, bit at the top but you can of course uh, use sparkly yarn and get really creative and stuff like that. So we're going to start off with the red yarn and I'm using a sport baby weight yarn. So this is a yarn weight of two. With that, I'm using a three millimeter crochet hook, but you can use any yarn that you like. So in any hook that's suitable for the yarn that you're using. You're also going to need a yarn a tapestry needle as well, a pair of scissors and a little bit of toy stuffing or more yarn scraps for stuffing. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so we're going to start off with a chain four loop. You can of course use the magic circle uh, technique as well if you prefer. So we'll start off with a slip knot and we're going to chain four, three and four. We're going to put our hook into our first chain, bring the yarn through the first chain and straight through the loop on your hook. And you've got a little looper of chains joined at the beginning and the end. And into the center, we're going to work eight single crochets. This pattern's in US terminology. Uh, in UK terms, it's going to be double crochets. So start off with a chain one, not going to count that as a stitch. And putting your hook into the center of your loops, not your first chain, which can look bigger. Go right into the center, bring the yarn through, then just wrapping it around the chains. We're going to work a single crochet. And we want eight of those. So that's one. Do another one. Two. Three. I'm carrying my tail end as I go as well. And that helps bring in any holes in the middle at the end. Four. Five. Six. Seven. And one more. Eight. Okay, so we've got eight single crochet wrapped around that four chain loop. And because I carried my tail end, I can pull that hole in a little bit as well. So then we're going to slip stitch into our first single crochet. So two, four, six, eight. Find your first single crochet. And we're going to slip stitch into there. So bring the yarn through there and straight through the loop on your hook. Okay, so that's the end of round one. Then round two, do a chain one, don't count that as a stitch. And starting in the same stitch you just slip stitched into, we're gonna do two single crochet. So one and another one in the same stitch. So two single crochet. And we're gonna do two single crochet in each stitch around until we've got a stitch count of 16. So we're doubling up increase round, so two single crochet in the next stitch, one and two, and two single crochet in each stitch around. So I shall do that and then come back and just make sure you've got a stitch count of 16 at the end. Just two in there and two in the next one. Okay, so just going up to the last stitch, two single crochet in the last stitch as well. One and two. And then we're just going to slip stitch in our first single crochet. Now a few stitches to look out for. Sometimes it looks like there's an extra stitch at the end, it's what I call the fake stitch. It's just your previous slip stitch. So make sure you skip that and skip the tiny chain one you made and find that first proper single crochet and slip stitch into there. And of course you can work continuously if you prefer, if you don't like joining your rounds. You can always do that. Uh, the reason I join rounds is to help beginners know where they are and to help me know where I am when teaching. 
Um, but obviously if you're doing color changes, then it can sort of end up like this where you've got the color changes distorted. So whereas joining the rounds, your color changes are more like this. So do bear that in mind. But what we're gonna do now is another little chain one, don't count that as a stitch. And we're gonna do one single crochet in each stitch around. And we're gonna do that for three rounds. So starting in the same stitch you just slip stitched into, we work a single crochet. And we're just gonna do one single crochet in each stitch around, keeping a stitch count of 16. And we're gonna do that for three rounds, okay? Three rounds. So I shall do that and then I shall come back. So one single crochet in each stitch around, keeping a stitch count of 16 for three rounds. Okay, it's just coming up to the last stitch on the third round. Now someone once mentioned in the comments that they always seem to end up with the wrong side on the outside. Well, there is no right or wrong side, but if you want to get more the typical side, uh, try and when you work your crochet, uh, is to just pop it out towards you and then hopefully you get the correct, correct side on the outside. But then we're just gonna slip stitch to join our round. We should still have a stitch count of 16. We should have like a tiny little beanie. What we're going to do now is a decrease round. So we're going to start off with a chain one. And I'm going to do the invisible decrease. Uh, a little bit neater because it's such a small project. So to do that, starting in the same stitch you just slip stitched into, we're going to single crochet two stitches together. But rather than go under both loops here, I'm just going to go under the front loop and then straight over to the next stitch and into that front loop as well. So you're under the first two stitches front loops only. Bring the yarn through and then yarn over, pull through to do a single crochet. And that's a single crochet invisible decrease and it's much flatter, so it uses less yarn. We'll do that all the way around. So the next two stitches, front loop only, straight into the next front loop. So no yarning over or anything. So two front loops, yarn through, Pull through two loops and just do that all the way around front loop front loop yarn through pull through two and we're going to do that all the way around and reduce our stitch count back down to eight then when you get back to the beginning just going to slip stitch into that first Decrease. Sometimes I feel like my hooks need to be just a little bit pointier. <laughs> Slip stitch into there and you should have a stitch count now of eight. Just going to bring up a loop and grab our scissors. I'm just going to open out our little tiny bobble. It's good to use blunt scissors. These are a bit too sharp, but I'll have to do for now. I'm going to get a little bit of stuffing and we're going to stuff our tiny bobble. Let's be a bit careful with these sharp scissors and then just stuff your bobble. Okay, so when you've finished the stuffing, we're going to rejoin our hook and we're going to bring in the top cover. So color, cover, color, cover, cover, color, <laughs> which in this case is this kind of almost a luminous yellow to try and make it look a bit goldy and more interesting. But if you've got some really nice sparkly yarn, now's the time to bring it out. But we're just going to join our yellow with a chain one. Just pull our red tail ends. And we're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch around. So keeping a stitch count of eight, starting in the same stitch we just slip stitched into. So starting there, do one single crochet and work one single crochet in each stitch around keeping a stitch count of eight. And the last one, eight. Okay, and then we're just going to kind of stop there. I'm not gonna do a slip stitch. What I'm actually gonna do instead is put our project down, get our scissors, and I'm going to cut the red yarn not leaving too much of a tail. I'm going to leave a little bit of tail with the yellow yarn though. 
So you want to create a tiny loop. And I'm just going to pull that loop through. Then the two shorter ones, I'm just going to secure by tying a knot. And then I'm going to hide these tail ends on the inside. So I'm going to trim them down for the sake of this video, but you can hide them on the inside. Just pop those inside. Then we're going to take our yarn needle and what we're going to do is thread it on with the yellow, the longer tail end. And what we're going to do is we're going to skip the first single crochet we did in yellow and find the next one and thread from the front to the back. Bring that through. And not pulling too tight, we're going to find the last stitch we made and the loop at the top. It's going to go under the back loop only from front to back. And what this does is it creates a nice neat join and you can't really tell where the join is. You've got perfect stitches on the top. The next thing to do so we're just going to go down the middle. So you've got this slight hole, which you can sew up if you want to, but I think it's fine to leave open. We're going to sew to the bottom, but what we want to do is keep a loop. And I recommend putting your hook in here, at the thicker end, and then use that to just hold that loop. And then we're going to secure our tail end by pulling that through. And we can pull a little bit tightly because our hook is holding that loop for us. And then just finish hiding your tail end. And after you go through your project a few times, securing, <laughs> don't get the second one stuck, securing on the inside, your loop should be secure. Okay, so I think that's enough and then we can just take out our hook we've got a little loop there and we can cut our tail end just pull it slightly trim and then pop that on the inside and there we go there is our finished little bauble with a tiny loop to go with our other baubles so you can make a few of these in different colors and uh, then we're going to, you can just string them together, crochet them together. So I'm going to make a few more of these, then I'm going to come back and show you how to join them all together. Okay, so I've made a few more little baubles, made some green ones. Unfortunately, I only had a really light green. It'd be nicer with a darker green. But anyway, you can make your little baubles in any color that you like. So we're going to try and join them now. And I've got some sparkly DK yarn, which I used in my previous snowflake tutorial if you want to go check that out my snowflake jeans and i'm just cutting some length so whatever you want to however long you want these to be depending on how many little baubles you've got uh, i haven't tried this yet this method of joining so i'm hoping this is going to work i think if i did chains it would be too thick so what i'm going to do is i'm going to thread on my yarn and i'm just going to bring that through onto my first bauble and then I'm going to remove my yarn needle and it's just sat on there nicely and then I'm just going to tie a knot to secure the little bauble in place. So I really hope this works. So there we go and then that's secured nicely in that position and then rejoin our yarn needle and we'll do a little green one this time again thread through the loop and I'm going to leave maybe about this much space in between and do the same thing again. So I'm going to just create a little knot and secure that in place try and keep the knot on the top so it hangs nicely. And there we go. And I'm just going to repeat that all the way along, trying to keep a nice even space. And hopefully my yarn is long enough. So do a red one now. And again, about that sort of distance, just remove the yarn needle, and then trying to keep it in place. Just create a little knot on the top of our loop 
and there we go. That's how we join the little baubles, which I completely didn't know was gonna work until now. So <laughs> I'll do that for the rest of them and then we can have a look at our finished project. And there we go. Managed to just about fit that one on. You probably want to uh, make sure that you've got the exact right length for how many baubles you want to do. Get a ruler, measure the distance between, but hopefully that's given you an idea of how to join your little baubles. And you could use this for gift wrap, you could use this for hanging around a Christmas tree. And if you want to, you could even decorate the uh, individual baubles and by sewing on some little crisscross uh, to make some little stars on the shapes. Maybe I'll do that as well. But there we go. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I hope you managed to follow along. And uh, if you do make some little baubles yourself or even the other tutorials I've done recently for the snowflakes or the holly chains, then if you're on Instagram, tag me at Happy Berry Crochet so I can see your projects. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. A huge thank you to my Member Plus members on my website and my Patreon supporters for helping make these tutorials possible. So I will see you soon for some more crochet crafting fun. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video, share this video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon for some more crochet crafting fun. Thanks for watching. Bye.